So basic uh, blocks and parries. Now the big part, slipping. Okay, this That's is when, you, yeah, yeah, this is a, this is where it separates the boys from the men here, right? Getting your head out of the way. Yeah. So a lot of it is hip motion, all right? So for example, if I'm gonna slip the jab, you throw the jab here. Typically, we're gonna work outside slips, meaning that I'm going behind here, rather than trying to slip inside, because then this hand's coming next, all right? So when I slip outside, and you could throw it straight down, right? So you're here, boom. What am I doing? My body is rotating here, hips. I could also take a little step out if I wanted to, right here, right? So when you throw that jab, boom, I'm out. Now, I don't want to do this, throw the jab. I went too far. It's gonna take me a long time to get back up. So ideal jab, uh, uh, the ideal slip, you go, right there. Just goes right over my shoulder, right? Because I could recover very fast there. And what can I recover with? You throw the jab, boom, boom, right? So the less I move, the better odds I have of landing my counter punch. And that's the advantage of the slip. When I block, I don't really have a good counter opportunity. When I slip, I'm taking advantage of your motion and now I get an angle to try to return fire. All right, so we're trying to stay real tight. So for example, on you here, I throw a jab, I'm gonna go nice and slow, boom, that's it, that's perfect, right? And now if you wanted to, right hand comes in, bing. All right, so that's the natural slip counter. You jab, right hand, boom. Boom, boom, yep. Boom, boom, good. Boom, boom. Move around a little bit. And now, all because you know how to slip doesn't mean I slip every possible punch. So when do you slip? When you have the timing for it, right? So initially, if I'm fighting somebody here and you start throwing a jab at me, right? Bing, you know, I'm just gonna catch first, see your rhythm, boom. Okay. Now, right? And that's also entries to clinching and whatnot. If I read the timing, yeah, yeah, I can, I can tackle you or whatnot, yeah. right? So, uh, sli again, slipping takes good hand-eye coordination. And usually, that requires timing. And every opponent is a little bit different. Some are a little faster, others are longer, right? So that's why you see in fights, the first minute or so is usually kind of tentative where they're kind of circling around. And sometimes you see them just throwing punches in the air like this. Like, they're trying to measure, like, okay, how close do you have to get so I can hit this guy, versus how close does he need to be to get in? Because if I have the smaller reach, now I'm fighting at a disadvantage because I have to be able to work inside where I will be able to connect before he does, All right? So you're not in a rush to slip punches. But once you feel comfortable with my pace and my rhythm, then you can slip and boom, and, and go for a counter, right? Now, the right hand's very similar. You throw the cross, boom, right? And aim right down the middle, yep. So you go again, boom. It's just there. Yep. Foot rotates a little bit, rotate the hip, here. Yep. And then my counter punch is the left hook. So you throw the, the cross at me, boom, wham. Come over the top. So if I do it to you here, throw the cross, boom, exactly. And you feel the slip cocks the punch for you, right? Because it gets your shoulders in position where now you can rip a good hook. Likewise, when you slip the jab, it's cocking the punch for the right hand, all right? So that's the benefit of slipping. We get the counter punch, right? So we'll do those a few times for the cross. I'm here, bing, boom, yep. Bing, boom, bing, boom. Nice, good. I feel like you wanted to go over, you're like, no, you didn't move, that's good, that's good. You, you know what, that's the one way you can trick people's rhythms. Yeah. If you do it over and over and they, get, they feel like they have a timing, you break the rhythm, yeah. it screws them, yeah. yeah, it messes them up. So always, don't anticipate, always see it coming. Okay. Last one, left hook, okay? So if you throw a left hook at me, right, it's gonna come in here, boom, you go again, boom. Oh, shit. Right? So that's the bob and weave, <laughs> right? So the, with the bob and weave, what I'm doing, the hook is coming over my head, and it's like I'm slipping away from it. Here, like I did with a cross, mm -hmm. but then I bend and come under. So if you see me by myself, when I'm here, right, I'm doing like a circle this way. If you watch the center of my hip, right? <laughs> so the hook is gonna come from this side, right? So you're gonna slip this way, bend your knees, 
and slip the other way. Yes. So you see the circle, right? So what happens, you're getting away from the punch, then coming underneath it, back up. Yep. And right hand comes once again off that slip count. From here, boom, yep. And just like before, I wouldn't want to do this. Right. <laughs> you, you see it happen sometimes. If you go like super low, you want a haircut. Just like zip. Right? So, boom. Exactly, because you recover very quick. Particularly if you saw me going heavy with a hook where I went like, ah, like this. Yeah, now I'm screwed. Yeah. I, I, went, I over committed to that punch. Boom. Boom. And you can throw that right hand. Boom. Boom. Yep. Boom. Boom. Good. Boom. Boom. Excellent. Okay, so bob and weave off the right hand, uh, off the left hook. Similarly, if I was throwing a right hook or overhand right, which is popular in MMA, where you know, people are going, boom, those big bombing punches, you just go the opposite way. So in this case, the overhand right would be coming this way, right? So I would slip here, come underneath. Boom, right? So, yeah. Right, so the, f the first one we slipped here, ducked and went under. So now, essentially, whenever there's curved punches, I move away from them first, and then I duck underneath them. Right, so curved punch is coming here, you move away from it, and then duck underneath it. Boom, yep. Yeah, this is the, the classic MMA <laughs> punch where they go like, ah, and they go big overhand, try to knock someone out. So you just, again, you slip away from it, and then duck underneath it. Boom, yep. There you go, yeah, exactly. You want that circular motion, boom. And this is like, for example, that overhand right, right ugh, that overhand right in particular, you want to try to duck it, bob and weave it. It's harder to block because it tends to hit you in the back. Like for example, if you put your hands up to block, like you were with a hook, let's say like this. I go straight through. Yeah, because it tends to hit you here, which technically in the sports illegal, but nobody ever gets called on it. And now it lights out. <laughs> Whenever you get hit in the back of the neck, it shuts up down your optic nerve. So that's when you see people have like flash knockouts where they'll just drop and then they come back up yeah. because it's like someone just switched the lights on, you know? Yeah. So it's a dangerous place to get hit. All right. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted when the next video drops. Now, if you want to get more videos like this on a daily basis, go and visit my membership site at ffacoach.com. We have online video curriculums our daily videos, and you can get bonus courses like the Kimura Trap System for free when you enroll today. So go ahead and help support the channel and visit today.